Fundraising for a business, the future plans of Thirst, the year 2024, and why are Thirst prices so high? These are all topics that we're covering on tonight's episode of Ethan's Angle. Everyone's got their angle, their story, their game. This is my story, this is my game, this is my angle on entrepreneurship. This is my angle as an entrepreneur. Hello everybody and welcome back to your favorite show about entrepreneurship, about leadership, about all of the cool stuff that you guys submit. This is Ethan's Angle Reinvented, episode two, where I take topics from you guys that I give my angle on, Ethan's Angle, as I'm growing my business, as I'm leading my company and my teams, what is my angle on this certain things? It can be something about thirst. It could be something about business. It could be something about completely, has nothing to do with either one of those, anything. I'm giving my angle on it on this show. So let's get into the topics for today. First up, we got fundraising. This is one of the first uh, questions that got submitted when I did the first episode last week. Fundraising, and I'm assuming what this person meant was fundraising for a business. And my hot take on fundraising for a business is I want people to do it the way I did it. And that is don't fundraise. I think the skills that you get from entrepreneurship don't come from having all the money to do all the things that you want to do. Not having funding forces you to learn how to get customers through your door with no money, do these core tactics, core skills of entrepreneurship, I would have never learned with funding. And so the answer is, in my opinion, forget about fundraising. Start with something that you can do little by little. If you wanna get into the restaurant business, start with catering, start with a truck, start with a snow cone shack. Do something realistic that you can do with no fundraising and work your way up, work your way up. And then, and then maybe once you've honed those skills by having nothing, then you can, raise funds and actually use those skills and put them to work. But I'm telling you right now, if you ask me who's gonna do better, someone who has no entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial experience and raises a ton of money, that person's not gonna get any skills and they're probably gonna put that money to waste because they haven't developed any skills. That person versus someone who's built something from the ground up with no money, that's how you learn it. That's how you learn how to get customers through the door. That's how you get employees to stay. That's how you make every penny act like a dollar with your marketing. So I just hate fundraising. Um, I haven't done it. I'm still honing those skills that I was talking about. I don't wanna fundraise. I'm okay with fun fundraising at some point in the future, but I haven't honed the skills to the point where I wanna fundraise yet. Like I still want, I don't want that money because then I'll not have to use the same amount of skills and work to get done what I wanna get done. And I'm really trying to hone those skills over everything. And so I hate fundraising, that's my take on it. I think that everyone should figure out how to do it little by little and gradually in the long way and forget about fundraising and doing it the fast way. Like that's not how you, that's not a true entrepreneur. So give me a few more years to uh, hone my skills in then if I take some funds, I'll put them to real work. <laughs> okay, topic number two. We've got, what's the long-term plan of thirst? What's the long-term vision of thirst? Well, here's the reality. I know that thirst is going to be a not only countrywide, but worldwide brand. Here's why I know that. Because we are not a soda shop. We are an experience through the drive-thru and our demographic fits everyone. Look at so a business like Sonic. It's one of the most famous, iconic, you know, fast food places in the world. They sell drinks and really good treats and fast food to go with it. That's exactly what I'm doing. Look at some of the biggest franchises in the world, like Wetzel's Pretzels, Auntie Anne's. These are soft pretzel businesses. Um, and so the people that think, you know, it can't go out of Utah because it's a soda shop. Number one, I get it, but you have to look at someone like Sonic who's doing it that way, and then consider that Thirst sells more than 50% of our sales is food at almost all of our locations, not drinks. And so I'm, we're doing that on purpose. We're trying to make that shift towards food on purpose. And I think the happiness of the brand, I think the, the just scalability and, and, and the community that we're building is, it's, it's a Disney World, Disneyland type brand. It's a, it a, has a location near every town type of brand. It's a long-term sustainable, long-term owned by Ethan brand and just build an empire of 
having a happy, spreading, have a happy day. Like, I think my NFT project is going to make this community of thirst even deeper and more scaled, and it's gonna be crazy. So my vision is to go everywhere. My plan to do that is I wanna lock down all of Utah. You know, 20 to 30 stores here in Utah, iconic ones, perfectly, perfectly executed too. Like, I'm in no hurry to do that countrywide, worldwide growth because, because thirst hasn't become, finished becoming what it is yet. Like I think over the last five and a half years of starting from starting thirst to now, it's changed so much, so much has changed in it. And I think one of the things that businesses make a mistake on is seeing a little bit of success and you know uh, growth and all of a sudden deciding that it's ready to go forever. I think that's a mistake and I think that it's hard to make those like early growth changes if you're at you know, franchises all over the country versus just at a few stores. And so my plan is to go deep, to perfect the stores, perfect the menu, perfect the quality, perfect the speed, perfect the experience, perfect the marketing too. Like operations, while I'm, while I'm opening stores in all of Utah, I wanna lock down the operations, but I also wanna get insanely popular all over the world, you know? whether that be through TikTok, whether that be through Instagram and influencers, whether that be through, you know, fire from our NFTs and, and buy in from all over with those. Like I wanna be so popular before I expand outside of Utah because I potentially want those outside of Utah people to be franchisees that own thirsts. You know, I really have a, a vision of owning all of the thirsts in Utah locking them down, making them perfect, making them the model stores. And then once that marketing is to the point where we have brand awareness everywhere and I could sell a franchise anywhere and it truly will be busy and valuable for that franchisee, that's when I'll do it. And so I'm thinking about franchising everywhere except Utah and I'll own everything in Utah and, and maybe a couple others. But um, that's the plan, but I'm in no hurry. I mean, it's not gonna happen within the next two years, I don't think at all. Like I plan on going deep in the ops, making it perfect, having, you know, processes, you know, in everything, not just operations, but in marketing. Like there will be no question that if I sell a franchise ever, that franchisee is going to be insanely successful because of the resources and support they have from me and our, my corporate and the fact that they're just gonna be insanely busy and guaranteed a good, you know, sales and revenue. So. That's my thoughts, my long-term vision. I wanna own Utah and then potentially franchise the rest to take over the world with it. And I think it's a brand that could be everywhere. Topic number three. Why are your prices so high? <laughs> Why are your prices so high? I love this one because I get it. <laughs> I get it. We just did a price raise for 2022. And the reality is, here's the biggest misconception that we're making a ton on drinks because we're a soda shop and we sell drinks. We make the least amount of money on anything on our menu. We got pretzels, beignets, cookies, you know, pretzel dogs, drinks. We make the least amount of money on drinks. Literally, the, our, our most popular drink and its size, which is a 32 ounce Dr. McCreamy, of any drink, a 32 ounce Dr. McCreamy is the most popular. Raw cost right now, that's almost 80 cents to make a Dr. McCreamy 32 ounce, 80 cents. I can flip that um, Dr. McCreamy for three bucks and that margin is not great on that. I mean, compared to what they are on pretzels and beignets, it's, it's, it's no match. And so there's not a lot of money in the drinks, number one. And number two is, I mean, the big thing that we raised our prices on our, is our beignets. The thing about it, the real reason that went into it is we got a whole facility just to make beignets fresh from scratch. And so like, that's literally with labor all in what it costs us in order to get uh, a reasonable profit margin. And by the way, which isn't staggeringly high, like our cost of goods is around 30 to 35% um, with this price raise. And so I would just say, the reason our prices are quote unquote so high, the truth is our drink prices are the same as Swig's. Um, our beignet prices are higher than they were before, but honestly, I made a mistake by selling them so low before I didn't even realize I was basically losing money on every beignet I sold after all the labor and after all, everything it takes for just for the product cost. And so, um, yeah, 
I'm not jipping anyone, I promise. <laughs> if anything, I made that move just to stay alive because the cost of everything is going crazy. And so I would say I get it and I love you for even asking and caring enough to ask. But my answer is that's the price that we have to be at in order to be a sustainable business. And so I love you and I get it, but uh, that's the reason why. Question number four. 2024, what do you think will be going on? What do you think is gonna be happening? Where will thirst be, where will I be? 2024, I mean, realistically, that's not very far away from now, right? Two, two years from now, I think NFTs are gonna be huge. I think Facebook is gonna integrate, Meta is gonna integrate NFTs into Instagram and TikTok will integrate NFTs into TikTok. And I think NFTs are gonna be a huge part of everything. The real thing about NFTs, which I, you've probably heard me say before, is what's really clicked for me is an NFT turns an expense into an asset. And it's all verifiable and sellable on the blockchain. And that just makes way too much sense. And now instead of spending money on something and throwing that money in the trash basically, never getting it back, you can spend money on something get the value out of it and then resell it. That's, un that's technology that's gonna be adapted. And especially if someone like Meta integrates that into Instagram, which is the communication platform of life. <laughs> so I think NFTs are gonna be huge in 2024. I really think they're gonna go fast over when once that happens with something like Meta. Once they integrate it, that's gonna be the switch where everyone starts to get it. Um, I think that Thirst is going to be multiple locations bigger. And it also could be something I have no idea what I'm, what it could ever be right now. Like right now I have a car wash. Two years ago, I could have never told you that I was gonna have a thirst car wash. And so uh, two years ago, I don't even know if I knew about Wetzel's two years ago. And, my, and what I'm doing with them now is, is just crazy to think about. So I think two years could be anything I'm willing to adapt. I'm, I'm completely not ruling out that I'll get excited about something at any point at all and just completely change a path or go after some new endeavor. Like truly, truly, this is a game for me. Like, and I, I like to think about it that way because one, it makes it fun, it's competitive. Like every day we get to go up, throw the jersey on, boom, and play the game and leave it all in the field. Like that's why I like to get my team members, managers and people that are really committed for us at Thirst. I get them Thirst cleats, which are basically just like orange Nikes. But like, it's just, a, it's just another, or I like to wear my Thirst jersey, as you guys might have seen. Like, entrepreneurship's a game. And like, when you think about it that way, it's one, it's a little less stressful, right? Like, not to say that I don't take it seriously when people's paychecks are riding on the line and, you know, you know, lots of serious stuff is on the line a lot of the times. But I think at the end of the day, like, it's just the game of business. And uh, when you think about it that way, like, you don't take stuff too seriously. Um, even like when I'm feeling extra mad or angry or something or like upset about something that's going on in the business, I'm like, oh yeah, like, this is just a game, like at the end of the day, like there's stuff that matters more. Um, and so it makes it more fun. It makes it a little less stressful. And I don't know. I actually like the game of business, so let me know how I got to that point. But that's what I'll finish with on this episode of the Ethan's Angle it is the game of business and a topic that I'll submit for this week because, gosh, like when you make stuff into a game, you almost become unstoppable because, like, how, as a non an entrepreneur that's in competition with someone like me who thinks of it as a game, like how could you truly have the ability to, you know, outwork me or out be more excited than me about the craft or, you know, be more optimistic about pushing the vision forward if it feels like work. And so, you know, I'm not saying everything feels like this jolly old game for forever, but I think if you shift and really think about your thing as a game, or entrepreneurship as a game, and it it really coming second to what matters more, you know, which for me is you know relationships, family. Uh, it, it gets a lot better. It gets more fun. It gets easier. And so, 
leave you with that. Think about your thing as a game and uh, watch me play my game every day. It's gonna be a dang good time. Another episode of Ethan's Angle in the Books here at The Shop, our co-working space office tonight. Not bad, a little, a little, a little uh, location for future episodes? I think yes, but we're looking downtown Salt Lake here. <sighs> On that grind, baby. Hope you guys are too. Love ya.